morning from the kitchen folks. It's another experimental day in home brewing where today I'm going to attempt to make a prune and honey sparkling wine. So these are the ingredients that I'm going to be using in today's brew. The key ingredient being four litres of prune juice from concentrate and in terms of ingredients it literally just contains water extracted prune juice from concentrate. So no additives or preservatives or anything that can harm the yeast or the fermentation. And we're using a bit of spring water, most of a jar of honey. There's probably about 400 grams of honey in there. I'm going to be using Lalvin Champagne, Sparkling Wine and Cider Yeast and a little bit of Young's Yeast Nutrient. To start with, I'm just going to add a little bit of spring water into this glass. Nothing dramatic. I'm just going to warm that up in the microwave for 30 seconds. I'm going to take a teaspoonful of the Lalvin yeast and I'm going to add that into my warmed up glass of water. I'm then going to take a teaspoonful of the Young's yeast nutrient and I'm also going to add that into the glass of water. I'm now going to leave this and let the yeast activate. Next up I'm going to add some spring water into this saucepan. Then my honey goes into the water. And I'm just going to pour it round and drizzle it. Then the heat goes on. So I don't want this to come to a boil, but I do want it to melt the honey in for the water to get warm. My honey is melted, so I'm now pouring that through a funnel into my demijohn, which is safely in the sink in case there's any splashes. So that was easy enough, wasn't it? And actually, this brew doesn't get any more difficult. I'm making the wine from prune concentrate. So this is in the style of a turbo cider. If you've not heard of a turbo cider, it's an apple cider made from concentrate, um, which is just fermented. And this is, uh, I've got this idea from a group on Facebook called Turbo Ciders for All. Uh, have a look for it, because actually it's really good and there's some really good uh, useful suggestions for recipes for brews in there. Anyway, I'm trying it in the style of a turbo cider, we might call it a turbo wine, I'm using prune juice. Some people would turn their nose up at prune juice and say, oh that's awful. But, do you know what, a prune's just a dried plum, as far as I know. So, what's wrong with that? So, let's give it a whirl anyway. The worst thing that can happen is, I make a wonderful alcoholic laxative. Well, it smells nice. Okay, I need to measure the gravity of this uh, wart before I add the yeast to it. So I'm just going to do that by pouring it into my um, gravity flask. Or tube, whatever you want to call it. So here's my uh, wart in the uh, hydrometer tube, hydrometer flask. And in goes the hydrometer. Very buoyant. And I'm starting off with an original gravity of 1.080. Now I'm not going to pour this back into the demijohn because I don't want any cross-contamination. Plus I filled the demijohn right up so I've just got enough room in the top for the water with the yeast in. So I'm going to have a little nifter and see what the prune and honey juice is like unfermented. Nice. It's more acidic than I expected, actually. I thought it'd have more of a rounded flavour. So I've got no idea how this is going to turn out. But hey, do you know what? If it keeps me regular, then we're all good, aren't we? So I'm just giving my yeast a little stir. And in that goes too. There's a lot of sugar in this. This is going to ferment fast. Now you'll notice that I've filled this right to the top because I want to get as many bottles as possible out of the demijohn. And you'll see that in doing so that there's not a lot of room here for the Krausen. So the Krausen is the fo foamy head that forms on top. Um, so if I just put an airlock in like that, then the chances are that the Krausen will rise up here and come through the airlock and make a mess. So instead of an airlock, I'm going to use a blow-off pipe to start with. 
So this is one hour later and you can see a mini Krausen has formed and if I zoom out you'll see that the blow-off pipe is working just fine. If I zoom in down there you can see bubbles coming up in the water bottle. So all good. So just an update from a day later just to show you that the blow-off pipe was absolutely necessary and as you can see it's got Krausen going all the way down but the air's still getting through and the bubbles are still coming up so these are definitely worth using. So I'll be back in a couple of weeks time when it comes to clearing. See you later folks. Hey from the kitchen folks, it's prune and honey wine clearing day. So here it is, looks like Bisto, very thick and brown still. Barely any activity in the airlock for a few days now. It was furious, absolutely furious for a week and then it's gradually slowed down and now I've got to this. So I'm going to clear it at this point. So it's bung out. Siphoning tube in. I'm using a clip to hold it in place. I've had to take an estimated guess as to where the bottom is. Uh, I'm trying not to get right to the very bottom into the sediment, but we'll see how I get on. Now the fun bit. It's a really thick and a lovely rich brown. And I'm transferring that into this plastic five litre water bottle. I'm using Clear It Wine Findings from Young's. It's a two step process. You put bottle A in first or some of bottle A, wait an hour and then put some of bottle B in. So bottle A or some of, equivalent to just over a teaspoon. And that should mix in now as this filters through. Just gonna have a little nifter while it's going in there, just out of curiosity. Cheers. It's like a, a medium dry. Weirdly, it tastes somewhere in between red wine and an ale. If you'd given me this blind, I could have said it was some kind of sour beer, maybe. Certainly not unpleasant. Very different. I've never made a wine that tasted anything like this before. And there we go. Bubbles in the siphoning tube. Tell me that that's now over. Because there's quite a lot of sediment in this last bit, I'm going to tip this back into the demijohn. But overall, that's actually done pretty well in terms of uh, the amount of sediment. There's not a lot there at all. So I've now got to wait an hour before I can add Finings B. So I'm just going to leave this for an hour in the kitchen, clean out the demijohn, and I'll be back then. Okay, an hour has passed. And we can see that the findings there have had no significant impact at all. In fact, I have a feeling that this is just going to be one of those wines that doesn't clear. But I won't know until I've tried findings B, so that's what I'm going to do now. So I've got my demijohn in the sink with a funnel, and I'm simply going to pour the wine into that. I don't need to filter it this time with the siphon, worry about sediment. I want it all to be mixed together. So I'm going to pour half in. Really agitate it up. Now I'm going to add my Finings B. Same amount as I did Finings A. And then the rest of the wine. Try not to slop it everywhere. So I'll put the bung back in the demijohn. There it is. Just going to give it the demijohn a rinse. Under the tap to get any sticky bits off. 
And now I'm going to leave this for a few days and see what happens. So I'll be back in a few days time. See you later folks. Good morning from the kitchen folks. It's prune wine bottling day. So here it is. This has now had finings in it for one week. I can't actually tell if it's clear or not because it's so dark, but I can say that the findings have done a great job. If you look there, there's a distinct layer of sediment at the bottom. So I'm now going to attempt to get all this out and get it bottled. So it's bung out, siphoning tube in. I'm holding the tube in place with this tube clip. And if you look down there, you can just see the bottom of the tube is above the sediment line. It's right on it virtually, but it doesn't matter because the first lot that comes out is going to go into my hydrometer tube. So now the fun bit. And that's quite milky with sediment to begin with. And it's cleared after that. It smells very pruney. As this is filling up, if you look at the pipe, you can see that it does look fairly clear. It's just very dark coloured. So I need to add carbonation drops. These will help a secondary fermentation inside the bottle, which will, is what will give it the sparkle. So it's, th it's three per bottle because it's one per 250 mil, and these are 750 mil bottles. You're supposed to add them before you start siphoning. I don't know why. Something to do with science. And there we go, bubbles in the siphoning tube indicate that that's over and I have actually got five full bottles. So that's good. So I'm going to take the final gravity reading now of this. And that's sunk nicely. Although not as far as I thought it would. And that's ended up on a final gravity of 1.022 1022. So to work out the alcohol by volume, I need to take the starting gravity, which was 1.080. I need to deduct from that the final gravity, which is 1.022. And then I need to multiply this figure by 131.25. And that equals a final alcohol percentage of 7.6%. So it's now time to bung my bottles. I've got plastic bungs which I've had softening in hot water just to make the job a little bit easier. One. Two. Ooh. And five. Okay, that's bungs in place. And now I need cages. So the cages will prevent any unfortunate missile accidents and they're all recycled cages, as are the bottles. One, two, three, four, and five. I'm now just going to rinse my bottles off to get any sticky residue from the outside. I'm just going to print out the labels. I'm calling this a melamel because a melamel is actually a mead that's got fruit in it. So that's the proper term for um, a prune and honey wine. So it's a prune melamel. So I'm just going to sticker these up. I like to make a nice job of my bottles because I'm proud of what's on the inside. So I also want to be proud of what's on the outside. And there we go. So 
So here's my prune melomel and that's now going to condition on these shelves for the next two weeks which will hopefully give it a sparkle. The shelves are temperature controlled. Behind them is a very thin and low wattage electric radiator that's connected to a thermostat plug and when the temperature on the bottom shelf of this gets to 19.5 or gets below 19.5 it turns the heater on and it knocks it off when it gets to 20.5 so these shelves are always between 19.5 and 20.5 which is enough to condition them so i'll be back in a couple of weeks time to sample this see you later folks Good evening from the kitchen folks, it's the grand opening night for my prune mellow mel. I'm quite excited about this one. I've got no idea what to expect really to be honest, but I'm hoping for a bit of a sparkle and I'm hoping for a good flavour, I'm hoping for a good aroma, but more than anything I'm hoping it doesn't have a laxative effect. Let's see. Okay. Very small pop, tiny bit of vapour, smells okay. Let's look at the pour, oh look at that, God, it pours like a beer. I've brewed beers which haven't had as good a head as that. So, it looks like um, Coca-Cola. Oh, it smells like it's a bit of a red wine hit. It smells good. Plum porter, red wine, something like that. Something really deep. Let's have a taster. So unusual, so different. Actually very tasty, drier than I expected it to be. Slight tart edge. You know like sour beers or lambics or some of the other like Belgian ones, is it a Geuze? I don't know how you pronounce it, G-E-U-Z-E. -E. It's a bit like something like that. I actually quite like it. It's actually not like anything that I've had before other than a Belgian beer. Yeah, good, it's a winner. So, if you don't see another video from me, then hey, this hasn't had a laxative effect and all's good. But if it does, then I'll just do a little warning at the end of the film, okay? Anyway, I'm gonna enjoy this tonight. So cheers, or should I say, bottoms up. Let's hope they're not down. Morning folks. Well, it's the next day and I did say I would post another film, a warning film, if there was a laxative effect with the uh, prune melomel. And there was a laxative effect with the prune melomel. But it's not all bad news. So let's just go through what happened. So I opened the bottle last night. My missus had a 150ml glass. I drank the rest of the bottle, which was about 600 ml. She was completely fine. For me, it started to get a little bit windy and a bit bubbly. And then to cut a long story short, I feel a bit lighter this morning. So, lesson learned, portion control. If you're going to use prune from concentrate in your brew, don't drink 600 ml. Next time I make this, I'm going to bottle it into 250 ml bottles and that will be it. That will be enough. It hasn't put me off using it, and it wasn't that bad really, but there was definitely an effect. But I'll definitely will use it again. I am going to make other different kinds of brews with it. I think I'm going to do a grain beer with some prune juice from concentrating, because that might be kind of like a plum porter effect if I can reach that. So that's something that I'd, I'd like to have a go at. But yeah, the taste was good, and I've enjoyed drinking it, but I'm not going to lie, there was a little bit of an after effect. Okay, so I did say I'd let you know if there was, and there was. Right? See you next time folks. The film that you've just watched is a Moss Home and Garden production. You can find more by going to www 
www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk I'd just like to say thank you very much for supporting my YouTube channel and for watching my films. It really is very much appreciated. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my YouTube channel in order to receive future updates about the Home and Garden films which I upload. You can find my YouTube channel by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk Please click on the red subscribe button. When you've done that, a little bell will appear. If you press that also, then you'll get future updates about the films which I upload. If you like my films, if you like my style of filming, then you might also like my travel channel, which you will find by going to youtube.com forward slash Stuart Moss or typing www.mosstravel.tv. Again, if you could subscribe to that channel, it would be hugely appreciated. If you'd like to get Moss Home and Garden updates on Facebook, then please open Facebook and do a search for Moss Home and Garden and you will find the page. If you like the page, then you will get future updates on there. And if you'd like to connect on Instagram for home, garden and travel photography, as well as some stories, then my username is Stu Moss, S-T-U-M-O-S-S. If you'd like to connect on Twitter, then my username is at Stuart Moss. And if you'd like to contact me about film usage or any other issue, please just email me on stewmosshomegarden at gmail.com. Once again, thank you very much for supporting my channel, for watching my films. I do appreciate it. I'd just like you all to have a great day.